Hey guys, and welcome to this video. So yes, I'm in the same shirt as last week's video, but now I have a baby, and so these film sessions need to be kind of grouped. So <laughs> so I'm glad you guys could join us today. Uh, today we are going to be doing live chat number six, and it's going to be labor and postpartum tips. So grab a Coke, because things are about to get super TMI. Yeah. My camera was fully full on battery, and it says it's almost dead. So we're going to make this live chat a little quick. Okay, so I have a sister-in-law, actually two sister-in-laws, that are expecting a baby. And I had a best friend who is expecting a baby. She has recently just had her baby. But I made a list of tips since I went into labor first um, to help them out, and I emailed it to them. So, baby's starting to wake up. Oh, no. I made an entire list of tips so we're gonna go through them if you're a family member if you don't want to watch this video that's okay it is super super TMI too much information um, but I wish I had a video like what I'm filming that I wish I would have watched a video or seen a video like this before I went into labor because these are some things that I would have liked to know um, so let's just get into it Tips for early labor, this is usually one to three centimeters. So number one is to labor at home. I couldn't do this, I had to go in right away because I was having bloody show. Um, and I called my specialist and they said that I needed to get in there immediately. And I wasn't able to labor at home because my blood pressure and baby was acting up in there and so they had to keep me right away. So I had to labor the entire way um, in the hospital. Next, pack your bags early and leave them in a the car. That's what I did. I didn't have to worry about packing my bags. And I had issues with preterm labor around 31, 32 weeks. And I had already had my bag packed in there. And it was a good thing just in case I had my baby then. Next is when your contractions become closer together, use a birthing ball or walk. This will help get the baby further down where he's supposed to be. Random tip here, but if you pre-register at your hospital, you get your epidural faster. It's true. At four centimeters, I got my epidural. Yeah, it wore off when I pushed and it wouldn't give me more. And I had to push for like two some hours to get baby out cold turkey. But whatever. Next is tips for hospital laboring. Walk around if you want to. Whatever makes you feel better. For me, it was sleeping and listening to my music when the contractions got super intense. Um, be super realistic about your pain level. You don't want to tell them you're like an eight when you're one centimeter. Um, the pain can always get worse, and believe me, it can get worse and it probably will. Next is sleep when you can. Tips for the epidural. For me, the epidural was the easiest thing in the world. Stubbing my toe hurt worse than getting the epidural. Um, so really for me, it was nothing to worry about. Everybody's different though. Um, but they kind of hold you like this with your head down and make sure you don't move. And then they ask you if you feel a tingle in your leg. I felt it in the left leg, and then that was about it. Make sure you follow exactly what the doctor says when you're getting the epidural. Um, remember that this will take the pain away. I was only a pain level 5 when I got it, but it was nice to uh, not feel anything for a bit. I wrote here, if, the, if your epidural wears off, make them give you more. If you have a continuous drip, they can give you more epidural. They wouldn't give me more because they thought I needed to push cold turkey or I wouldn't have the will to push or whatever because I had a sub doctor. No. Um, they can give you more, and they should. Also, they will insert a catheter after you get the epidural. You don't fill it at all. They take it out before your epidural wears off. Me, mine already wore off, and it just felt like a pinch when they took it out. It was honestly no big deal. Tips for pushing. There's going to be TMI here. Uh, don't push in your face. You don't want to push in your face. You'll be surprised that your eyeballs are actually sore after labor the next day. You'll be like, wow, my eyes did a lot of pushing and they shouldn't have. But don't focus the pushing here. You want to focus your pushing in your bum. Not your front area. Your bum. Uh, like you're pooping. In between contractions when I was... Um, when the baby's head was there and he was crowning and it was like the ring of fire, I had to continuously hold the push as though I was like pooing to hold baby's head there so he wouldn't slide back up so he would stay there. And every time I'd push, he'd get closer to coming out. Also, if you have a partner in a room with you watching, he should probably eat something sugary before all this starts because he could faint and sugar will help him not faint. 
Um, funny story, um, while I was pushing, my husband was like, Wow, it's like your body is splitting in half. Now that was funny when uh, I had the epidural in me, but it wouldn't have been funny if the epidural had wore off then. So, <laughs> um, only supportive comments during labor. And lastly, don't give up. Tips for after birth. While you're holding your baby, they will stitch you up down there. If you need stitches, they'll fix you up. Uh, please ask, how bad is my stitches? How many am I getting? Where are the stitches located? I wish I would have done this. I, all I knew was I had a second degree tear. Didn't know where, didn't know how, didn't know how many stitches, didn't know anything. Ask or you'll be sorry you didn't. Next, four times in one hour, they push on your uterus and your stomach. This hurts. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it hurts. Um, but think of it as, I have to endure this or else I'm gonna bleed out and die. And if you think of it that way, then it's not as bad. Next is enjoy your skin to skin time and let baby latch when he wants to. So my baby latched right away. Um, but with my gene mutation and my postpartum anemia that I've been suffering with, um, my body would produce the milk, it just wouldn't come out. So baby would suck for like 45 minutes or an hour and only get like a drop. And he wasn't peeing or pooing, so we had to go to formula. And he's 100% on formula now. Tips for breastfeeding. Let baby latch right away. Let him stay there as long as he wants. Since this happened to me, please make sure baby is peeing and pooing. Um, know it's okay to uh, supplement with formula. It won't hurt breastfeeding. Lastly, if breastfeeding doesn't work, however you feed your baby is okay. Um, just as long as you feed your baby. It's for the first night in the hospital. Baby's waking up. So one hour after giving birth, they took us to the postpartum area. Um, they checked my bleeding often and they also massaged my uterus. You need to continue to do this when you go home um, because it helps stimulate your uterus to get back where it needs to be. Um, but I didn't know I needed to continue doing that but they told me before I left the hospital so make sure you do that. Um, also take turns with baby during the night with your husband because um, you need rest too. You guys both need rest. Tips for postpartum care in hospital and at, and at home. Um, they will measure your pee twice, at least they did for me. Um, you may swell a lot, don't be alarmed. Uh, apparently it's normal, uh, but it will make you pee a lot. You'll sit in there and pee for like five minutes straight and it's just like a continuous half in the pee. Um, I actually fainted the first time I was in the bathroom. I think it was probably due to my anemia, but um, yeah, that was not fun. Luckily my husband caught me. Um, uh, most women faint the first time they go in the bathroom apparently, so don't be alarmed. Um, take everything home with you that you can. Take extra dermoplast and pads and whatever they give you, take it home. Take home it home and have stuff at home. Also, dissolvable stitches dissolve and fall out, so you may see these in your pad. It's okay, it means that things are healing. I had no idea about this, and I had to call my doctor because I was like a little alarmed, but apparently it's a normal thing. It's getting almost time for a dinner for this little dude, or a late lunch, or a late snack. So we're gonna uh, keep on going real quick and finish this up. Tips for your first poo. It's a scary idea, I know. So the biggest tip I have of all is right after I gave birth, I started noticing that I was getting a lot of gas. Um, and they were kind of like contraction type gas. It would just come and come and come continuously. Uh, I noticed when I got home and I pooed for the first time that it almost worked like a contraction to push it out. So the first time I pooed, honestly, my body did it for me. Um, and I didn't have to push or do like hardly anything. Um, so that's a big tip for you guys. So if you notice that happening, go with it, let it happen, let it flow, if you know what I mean, and it will help you so much. Don't strain, don't push really hard, take stool softeners, and it'll be okay. Next is hemorrhoids are a thing. And trust me, abuse the use of Preparation H. You'll thank me later. Next is remember to relax and let your body just do it. Uh, it took me 10 days postpartum to realize that mommy didn't have a baby in her tummy and I could lean forward to potty. Lean forward when you potty because if you lean back, 
it's gonna go on your stitches and on your sore area so lean forward so you don't have to worry about that use your peri bottle and it will be okay the hospital doesn't really tell you how to take care of pooing after you get home and like how to clean up after it but flushable wipes in your peri bottle tux pads and um, pads with wings and without will all help you um, so those are like my main essentials um, and a shower head that you can take off and spray will really help you too okay other random tips yeah other random tips mommy's gonna get you food in just a minute my little sleepy dude he overate a little earlier so I kind of don't want him to overeat as much and have a tummy ache anyway other random tips please don't try to go natural if this is your first baby pain can always get worse and it does um of course it's up to you guys but yeah i could say i had him cold turkey there at the end but i wish i would be able to say you know i had an epidural and my labor experience was better and i could actually think in my mind of having another child uh but when i think about how labor was it makes me not want to have any more children so i wish i would have been able to keep the epidural going during the labor process and tell you that yeah I had an epidural and honestly however you bring a baby into the world c-section vaginal natural epidural whatever you're a beast and you're amazing so just remember that next know that labor may not go your way and that's okay mine went way off the path that I had um, know that um, oh yeah hospital bag must-haves so these are just some things to think about that you may forget um, hair ties, spray bottle for spraying face, wet wipes for hands, long phone cord, um, a handheld fan, cameras, phones, chargers, music, headphones, things like that. Lastly, lots of what you learn at your birth class and your breastfeeding class may get thrown out the window, um, but that's okay. Um, they actually did take a copy of my birth plan. Did they follow my birth plan? Not really, but they did take a copy of it. The hospital did. Lastly, if you guys have any more questions or any advice for other people, let us know down below. Um, uh, and we can like help each other out. So that is a list of tips that I have for you guys. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I will see you in the next video soon. Bye!